。おお、なんだこのイケメンは。It is four in the morning。ムカつく。何をするんだ。おお。Hey friend, welcome back to my channel. I'm about to be a menace in this video, but friend, it's for your own good. I am not here to sell you dreams. I'm here to make sure that you succeed in life. So don't be mad at me. Don't take anything personally. I am just here to make sure that you get everything that you want out of your experiences. So with that said, one of my first videos on this channel was called Coding Boot Camps versus Universities and which one was better. This hat is actually a throwback to that video. <laughs> but I've noticed that the trend has geared more towards the boot camp side. So I just wanted to give my two cents on what you should be looking for in a boot camp or coding school because the goal is to get a job out of school and not all boot camps are built the same. <sighs> The first thing I'm going to say, and I know I'm about to stress some people out here, look at me. I need you to let go of the fantasy of going to a boot camp for three months and suddenly become this expert programmer. There's a reason why there is a whole four year curriculum dedicated around learning how to program. So thinking that you're going to go into a boot camp for three months and suddenly become this amazing coder when you don't even know what a variable is. It does not make sense. It's just a little unrealistic. What people need to understand is that full stack developer is a full stack of work. I mean, it's literally two different jobs in one. I remember a friend of mine was trying to choose a boot camp because she wanted to get into programming. And she would send me the curriculum for the boot camp that she was looking at so that I can look it over to see if it was any good. She was looking for only three month full stack positions. I was looking through them and for almost all of them, actually all of them that I looked at, it was mainly describing front end development. Even they know that they can't teach you to be a complete full stack developer in three months. Now I'm strictly talking about people who do not know even the basics of programming, like what a variable is, a Boolean, an array, any of that. Even being job ready for a front end or back end position in three months when you don't know anything is kind of a stretch. It could be done, but it's gonna be really, really hard. So I would definitely reconsider your time frame when it comes to pursuing this career. I know it's tempting to wanna just hurry up and like make this money, but you're not going to make any money if you don't have a job. I think a realistic time frame is at least six months. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a stretch. Minimum six months to get from knowing nothing about programming to knowing what you're doing. I'm going to make a separate video about interview processes because that's a whole different topic. So someone who already knows how to code, they usually spend two to three months just to prepare for an interview at a FANG company, just to give you a frame of reference. Also, value for price. I don't like the tuition that I'm seeing for what you're getting for some of these boot camps. I don't like it at all. That's why I've turned down every boot camp or coding school that's tried to work with me until now, just because it didn't seem like it was worth the money. Even these short payment plans for like a thousand dollars a month can put someone in a really bad position, especially in this economy. And that is my worst fear for you friend that you're paying money for something and you don't get the outcome that you want. So please sit down and calculate what you can afford with an at worst case scenario budget in mind because making a career change is hard. Making a career change and working or taking care of someone, that's even harder. I remember when I had to do DoorDash for a year and do a full time course load of computer science classes and it sucked. So here's some key words that I wrote down that you should really be looking for when looking through a curriculum. This isn't a fully comprehensive list, but just some things that I feel like are really important to grasp. JavaScript and jQuery. If you're looking at a bootcamp and the majority of the schedule is focused on just CSS and HTML over JavaScript, I don't know about that. Um, JavaScript is a very tough language to learn and it's one of those languages that weed people out. So you need to be making sure that you're spending as much time as you possibly can learning the language frameworks. So raw JavaScript is great, but the majority, if not all companies are using a framework. So React or Vue.js, 
those are two of the most popular ones. You need to be making sure that you see one of those names on the curriculum so that you can be competitive. Git, now this is something that you can learn on your own. So it's not like a 100% deal breaker, but it would be kind of weird if they're not using some type of version control because every company uses some kind of version control. Plus you can host your projects on there so that companies can quickly see what you've been up to. Projects, emphasis on team-based projects. And not just any projects, they need to be quality projects because if you're just coding a calculator, that's not something that you know a company would be extremely impressed over. It's a great jumping off point for sure, but I'm talking about quality projects that will give you a good jumping off point to build upon, especially when you leave the bootcamp or to highlight on your resume. So things that tie in multiple concepts and tie in multiple things that you're going to be learning throughout the curriculum is important because projects are going to be your selling point when you're job hunting. Testing slash debugging. Browser development tools are really important. Uh, this isn't like a complete deal breaker, but companies do wanna see if you know how to test your code. HTTP and Ajax. Okay, so you don't need to know what this means right now because if I explain it, I might run the risk of confusing you and I don't want that. But just know that it's a vital thing to know, especially if you're going to be a front-end developer or full stack. So it's going to show up multiple times on your resume, or at least it should. Okay, so let's move on to the back-end curriculum, Python or Ruby on Rails. Python is the easiest language to learn for beginners. So that's usually the one that I see the most. But interestingly enough, when I was looking at all of the curriculum. I think I saw Ruby the most, which sure, but the chosen backend language should be the majority of the curriculum. Frameworks, obviously for whatever language that you're using. Uh, Django is a good one, especially if it is a full stack curriculum and they're using Python. RESTful APIs. Now, this is another one of those things that you don't need to know what it means right now, but just know that it is extremely important that it's on the curriculum and that you know how to fully create one, utilize one, and explain fully what it means because it's going to show up or it should show up on your resume a lot. SQL or any database, honestly, it's mandatory that they are teaching you how to manipulate databases. Projects, of course, for the same reasons I stated for front end, debugging, data structures. Please friend, data structures is something that you need to know like the back of your hand. I rarely see data structures on a curriculum. So please, please, please either make sure it's on there or do the work to understand every single data structure. I'm talking about arrays, linked lists, hash tables, trees, all of that. I know that sounds like jargon right now, but it is so important. It will be harder to find a job if you do not know or, or understand what data structures are. So that's something I really, really want you to look for on the curriculum. I put this as a bonus because I've never seen it on a coding school curriculum, but big O notation, which is basically describing the runtime of a program, more jargon, but it's another one of those things like data structures that you just really need to fully understand. It's something that if you're going for the fang companies, especially, they're gonna be making sure that you understand what that is. Okay. Let's talk about Lambda School. So I've obviously heard of them. They're pretty famous for the way they handle tuition, which is that you don't have to pay a dime until you land a job that's 50K or more a year, which is a very bold statement. Like I said earlier, I always turn down partnerships for boot camps or coding schools because there's nothing that is super interesting for me to tell you about. So when they reach out to me, I was just like, okay, I need to do my research. So I asked you guys, I asked people who had gone to Lambda School independently, um, and I, I did my own research online and I did find some things that I had questions about. So I typed, I typed my little list of questions that I had for them and sent it over and they had answered them. So I'm going to be reading those answers to those questions. I'm not gonna let you know about something and not let you know everything that I would wanna know about it because this is a big investment. It's not just money, it is your time, it's sacrifices. And I don't want any part of accidentally 
or ignorantly putting you in a bad situation. So first let's actually compare the school to all the things that I had stated about um, curriculum and price. I read through this earlier. HTML, CSS, Git, good. Git, I mentioned that, JavaScript, good. So that's for four weeks. They're teaching React, HTTP, Ajax, and functional programming techniques, which is good for three weeks. And then advanced React, state management and web applications for three weeks. And then they jump into backend development. You can choose between Java and Node. See, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen um, a coding school teach Java. That's a, <laughs> that's a bold language to teach to someone who's never programmed before. It's interesting. They're using Spring, like Node. I have seen that before on a curriculum. Uh, intros of Python. So we're teaching a few backend languages, which, hmm. Um, Object-oriented programming, algorithms, data structures. So important. Data structures, graphs, hash tables. That's perfect. Um, for only three weeks, that's pretty short. And then it has labs and a job search for the last three weeks. So this is the most comprehensive curriculum I've ever seen. I feel like they're, they've hit all the points that I want them to hit. And it describes a full stack developer. Data structures, excellent. In that same breath, given the time frame for each module, it sounds like it could be overwhelming. Look, if you've watched the videos on my channel, you know that I cannot overstate this enough. Programming is hard. Do not let these YouTubers fool you. Learning how to program is hard hard in the beginning. I have seen the smartest people crumble. It's like learning civil engineering in six months and then you have to build a bridge. <laughs> Don't feel bad or put too much pressure that you're not understanding things as quickly as you thought that you would. It has nothing to do with being dumb and everything to do with learning something new, especially something that is so high level. Everyone struggled learning how to program in the beginning. We've all been through the pain. It's just about taking your time to truly, truly, to the point that you can teach it to someone else, understand the foundations of programming. Because if you don't understand like the basics, everything else is just gonna be shaky. So do not be ashamed. Do not be afraid to really take your time, even if that means taking longer with some of these segments. If you can learn all that in three weeks, great. But if you need to do four or five weeks, there's nothing wrong with that. It's only gonna benefit you in the long run. It's just all about practicing every day. One hour a day for an entire week is way better than 10 hours in one day than 10 hours once a week. So factoring in time and practice and giving yourself room and leeway to learn is something you really should think about because you're making a huge career change. It's not a job, it's a career. And in terms of tuition, let's read it. This is obviously their most famous part here. This is the one that I wanted to read the most, the income share agreement. So I'll leave it on the screen for you guys to read, but this part right here where it says that if you don't get hired, you never pay. I saw on their website or somewhere else that it's actually after five years. So it's if you don't get hired in five years, you don't you don't ever have to pay. But I think this is great that the tuition is deferred until you start making a job, until you start making more than $50,000 a year, which is equivalent to, yeah, a little more than $4,000, but that is before taxes. It really does give people of all different backgrounds a chance. And I do believe that it's one of the reasons why tech isn't diverse. If you guys know me, then you know that I believe that education is a human right, just like healthcare and housing. So I do like that option because for many people, a payment plan is useless if you can't even pay the payment. You know, I've been in that situation where I was on a payment plan for college and I had to pay a thousand dollars a month for three months, but it's like, I live below the poverty line. Okay, now let's read through this list of questions that I had sent them. Hey, it's voiceover Menda. So this video was getting too long. So I'm just going to be reading the question and putting the answer on the screen. Okay, first question, 
they wrote. Second question. How often are your curriculums improved? Is your curriculum unique and comprehensive? So that's good that they are constantly improving and adding to their curriculum. Uh, question three. Are students that should be held back being given more time? Question four. They sent me a link on a report that they can read, which I have linked below, but just a brief summary. Their test pool, which I think is really important because you can say 100%, but you only had like two people in the pool. So uh, their test pool was 743 students, which I think is a pretty decent size. And they broke that down because that also consists of people who graduated, who withdrew, and who are still enrolled. Okay, uh, question five. How are you preparing students to pass technical interviews? Question number six. How much help are graduates getting to find a job and for how long? And question number seven, finally. Is Lambda School accredited? License in California, Texas, and DC. So that's something important to keep in mind. I actually forgot a question. It is, are your instructors getting instruction to be able to answer student questions and provide proper feedback? This is incredibly important. There's also this important question from Instagram that I'll leave here. So I hope that answered at least one of the questions that you had about Lambda School. I think all of these things, especially these questions, are really important when choosing a school. So out of all the boot camps and coding schools that I've looked at, and I've looked at a lot because I've helped a few of my friends look through curriculum. Again, this is purely my opinion for people who have 100% decided they want to go to a coding school or boot camp. If you're still on the fence, then please do your research on all the options available for you. I do have a video on universities versus boot camps on my channel as well. I would recommend Lambda School the most solely because of how comprehensive their curriculum is and the way their tuition is set up. Those are two things that if I was looking would be really important to me. I'm thinking the reference of before this job when I was making $600 a month. If they didn't have this option, I probably wouldn't be able to afford it. So also, like I said, that curriculum, they hit the, the major things that I wanted to read, okay? Hash tables, graphs, talk to me nice. If you are considering signing up for Lambda School, I have a special link that you can click on. Obviously, I'm not entitled to anything. I'm only here as your friend just trying to give you all the information I had when I was on my journey. So you don't owe me anything. But if you are considering signing up, then my link is below. I'd appreciate it if you clicked on it. And if you've completed a coding school, especially Lambda School's curriculum, please write down your experiences in the comments. I'm sure people would love to read it. If you have any suggestions on things that people should be looking for when looking for a coding school or a boot camp, also write that down. Tell me your experiences. I would love to hear about it. But as always, good luck on your journey. Please take care of your mental health and welcome to tech. See you in the next video. Bye.